see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming from stripes and bright stars through the perilous night for the ramparts we my shepherd, I shall not want. He mm. makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. 
presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Our first reading is Psalm 46, and you might recognize this as a psalm that is the basis for Martin Luther's A Mighty Fortress is Our God. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the second chapter of Philippians. Paul says, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you're able and would like to, you can rise for the gospel. This is from the 15th chapter of John. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command, love each other. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Christ. You can be seated. Kelly, would you take this from Yes, thank you. When Pastor Jonathan asked me 
if I wanted to lead today's worship, I said yes, mostly because I didn't want to tell him no. <laughs> but when I started thinking about what to say, I have to confess to feeling inadequate. I'm one of the fortunate ones who has not lost a loved one in service to our country, at least not among the generations of friends or relatives that I've known personally. I do, though, have a lot of veterans in my family. And so I called the one closest to me, my beloved brother Joe, who served 20 years in the US Air Force and has gone on to serve in the FBI, which can also be a battlefield for keeping our nation safe from domestic threats. He didn't hesitate. And he said that he, if he were writing a sermon, he would build it on Philippians 2.11, which is what I said. You'll remember I read, Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking on the form of a servant, and he humbled himself by becoming obedient, even to the point of death, even death on the cross. Well, when my brother joined the Air Force in 1986, President Reagan had sent airstrikes to Libya in retaliation for the bombing of a disco in West Berlin. And the year before that, Gaddafi had bombed airports in Rome and Vienna and was waging and supporting what might be best called the War of Terror. A strike force from the U.S. Air Force and the U.S. Navy bombed targets that were strategic to Libyan terror operations. And I'm not proud to say this, but while my brother was in basic training, I was so terrified of what might happen to him that I actually sent him a letter telling him what a mistake I thought he was making by joining the Air Force. My dad had invited him either to get a job or join the military after a year of majoring in pool and skiing at Utah State University. So I didn't even have the first thought that he would have any kind of ideology behind his decision I thought he was just obeying our dad. But I received a letter from him trusting me down and saying that his decision to join the military was made from love of our country and he was willing to lay down his life for it. I realized my little brother was more grown up than I'd realized. Well, during his long career in survival training, he trained hundreds of airmen and officers who had any role in flying and he saved, I know he saved countless lives through preparing, through preparing them for any eventuality that they might encounter. In fact, he trained a team that trained Scott O'Grady. If you remember, he was the one who ejected into Bosnia when his aircraft was hit and he survived for six days using the skills he learned in his SEER training. In the days of Osama bin Laden, he went to Afghanistan twice. And while I thought he was more or, safe, more or less safe on his base in a training or an advisory role, I found out after his home that he'd been flying in harm's way low over desert mountains. And while he can't say because his missions were classified, I think that he was probably using his survival experience to locate the caves that were the basis of terror, of terror operations. Well, I know this is Memorial Day and not Veterans Day, but the reason that they tell you this background is because while I've not lost loved ones in service to our nation, my brother has. He lost several friends over the course of his 20 years, and he was willing to lay down his life too, as they had for their loved ones, their fellow servicemen and women, their family and friends, and their country, because we know freedom is not free. In fact, he lost his best friend in a training accident. So when he gave me the Philippians 2 scripture, he was speaking from personal willingness to empty himself and from his experience and losing those dear to him who actually emptied themselves for love. Well, this is how God loves, isn't it? God's love is a verb more than it's a noun. God's love does not benefit God, although the three persons of the Trinity cannot help but love one another because scripture tells us that God himself is love. And as we turn, heard yesterday, if you were at church on Trinity Sunday, God's love spills out into creation. It flows from God into you and into me, and it flows into our neighbors and into our world. Jesus tells his friend just before he goes to the cross, greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down their life for their friends. And this is just what he did. 
for the families of those who lay down their lives for their friends, for their loved ones, for their country, and even for our allied nations in global security. Every day is Memorial Day. Their loss is tangible in the empty seats at the tables, cold pillows in the beds, and the children growing up without their mother or father, their aunt or uncle, sister or brother. At the moment of loss, depending on their backgrounds, they might not be thinking of God's love. In fact, they might be thinking of God's abandonment. But God so loved the world that he gave his only son to die for the sake of humanity. So God knows a thing or two about sacrifice. God knows the pain of losing someone who is not only so very dear, but who is quite literally a part of him. So for those of you who have lost loved ones, who, but you've lost loved ones in service to their country, while the nation remembers them today, God has grieved with you every day. His love flowed into them to such a degree that they were willing to empty themselves of life itself for the love of their country. Catherine Lee Bates wrote, Oh, beautiful for heroes proved in liberating strife, who more than self their country loved, and mercy more than life. Who more than self their country loved, and mercy more than life. There's no greater love than this to lay down one's life for his friends. This is what Christ told his disciples he was going to do for us when he emptied himself of his equality with God to give his life for his church. Like Jesus, those who died in service to their country loved their country so much that they were willing to give their lives. And the love of God that flowed into them is the same love of God that flowed out of them into their service, and it does not die. As we stand here together in this place where the mortality of so many of our dear loved ones rests, we are assured that along with those who have gone before us, whether through sickness, old age, accident, or the violence of war, we can sing and pray with a great cloud of witnesses that wait along with us in sure and certain hope for the day that God will make all things new once and for all. The day that the dead will rise, the day that the dwelling place of God will be among us all, when we will be his people and God himself will be with us as our God. He will wipe every tear from our eye and death shall be no more, neither shall there be mourning or crying or pain anymore for the former things have passed away because he is making all things new. When we hear it is finished, he will say, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. Thanks be to God. Amen. 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 Gracious God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, creator of life, creator of hope, we give you thanks that you are here in the presence of this congregation of hopers and believers. Enable us to be brave in our remembering honest in our sorrow, and open in love and compassion to each other. Help us to see not so much answers to our questions, but rather the patience to mourn and grieve. Enable us to remember with joy the lives of those we have lost. Bless the families of our fallen troops and fill their homes and their lives with their strength and peace. In union with people of goodwill of every nation and boldness to answer the call to work for peace and justice and thus seek an end to violence and conflict around the globe. Send us your peace. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Now please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, in heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Yeah.
missing over 72,000 from World War II, 7,500 from the Korean War, 1,576 from the Vietnam War, mm -hmm. and six from the Gulf War that are still missing, so we want to help them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God grant to the living grace, the departed rest, to the nation peace and concord, to us all, your servants, the promise of everlasting life, light to guide us on our way, courage to support us, and your blessing to unite us in service to you, our God, and to this, our country. In the name of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.